Hi, this is Ali Arango, and today I would like to show you how to model a simple female in Blender 2.76. So let's get started. Okay, if this is your first time in Blender, I recommend you go to File, User Preferences, go to Input, and then choose Select with left click. Blender's default select is with right click, and this may confuse you if you're coming from Adobe or other 3D programs. Okay, while you're in User Preferences, click on add-ons, make sure you have a check mark next to 3D view, colon 3D navigation, then scroll down. Make sure you have a check mark next to mesh colon F2, mesh colon inset polygon, mesh colon loop tools, as well as mesh colon relax. Then scroll all the way down, then make sure you have a check mark next to user interface colon pi menus official. And uh, what these are, are these are add-ons that are included with Blender. When you turn on Blender, they're turned off by default. However, having these uh, add-ons activated by having a check mark selected next to them would just allow you to uh, easily follow along with this tutorial or more easily follow along with this tutorial. Okay, when you first come into Blender, this is what you see, your default cube, your camera, as well as your light. Uh, you are also in object mode in Blender. You tend to move things around as far as entire objects in object mode and you tend to model things in edit mode. You click here and you can see your different options. Here's edit mode here. Uh, there's multiple ways of maneuvering your camera and your view in Blender. If you hold your middle mouse button, you can uh, rotate the view. Uh, typically, the way that I use to navigate around the view in Blender now is if you click here, this is a navigation tab, and just by clicking these buttons here, you can easily manipulate your view. Okay, so we have our cube selected here. Again, we're in object mode. When you come into Blender, you come into object mode. What we're going to do now is click here, then go to edit mode. Here in edit mode, we can manipulate this cube uh, by manipulating vertices, edges, as well as faces. Now you can see where you can select these different uh, you know, pieces of geometry here. So you click here, here's vertices, you know, edges, as well as faces. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to click right here to go to front view. When you look right here, you can see which view you're in. Currently, we're in front orthographic view. If I hold the middle mouse button, rotate the view a little bit. See how now it says user ortho. You want to make sure that you're in front orthographic mode. If it says front, it being Blender, when you click right here, see where it says view perspective slash ortho, I'll click here, you can see it says front perspective. Now what this front perspective is, is it is a way of, you can see the front view of your object. Uh, however, it's more of a 3D kind of view. When we click here to go to orthographic mode, you can kind of see that there's this grid here. Uh, this is a view that's very useful for modeling. Uh, it kind of lays out your objects almost like you're looking at a, a blueprint. So this is the current view that you want to be in. Okay, so currently we have vertex select on. We have our cube selected as well. So what we're going to do is press W to open up the specials menu. We're then going to select subdivide smooth. Now that you have that done, what you're going to do is look over to your left and you can see right here we have a subdivide menu, right? So right now it says number of cuts. We want to take this up to three. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to click here to go to right view. We're going to press A to deselect. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button so I can rotate the view so I can see these four faces right here. I'm going to go to face select by selecting here. I'm going to hover my mouse here. I'm then going to press the C key. The C key activates kind of a paint select in Blender. So it allows us to paint the vertices that we want, which are these uh, eight faces right here. So I'm going to right click to get a paint select. Uh, typically, as we go through modeling uh, this female character uh, or simple female, we will typically select groups of four and eight. Just so, you know, just something to be aware of. Okay, now that we have these faces selected, what we're going to do is press S to scale on the Y axis. And see that green line that came out there? That green line is showing us how we're going to scale. When I press Y, I locked, I locked our scale to the Y axis. So I'm just doing this to make this area a little bit wider. 
Then I'm going to left click to lock in that scale. When you first start modeling, one way to help control uh, the geometry as you model is to, when you move things, to lock them to certain uh, axes as, as, as well as scaling. Uh, at first, it kind of seems like, you know, if you're, you're absolutely brand new, it might seem kind of complicated, but trust me, it helps you out a lot to, as you manipulate things, uh, as far as Blender, even other 3D programs, to lock them down so you can have pretty much uh, a nice tight control over what you're trying to manipulate. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to click here to go to right view. Then what we're going to do is we're going to press E to extrude, and we're just going to ride that extrusion line you see right there. See that bluish line? We're just going to go right down along that bluish line to about here and then left click to lock in. Okay, so basically what we have here is this eventually is going to become the head. This is going to be the neck. What you want to do now is go to front view. We're then going to press A to deselect. We're then going to press Z to go to wireframe. The reason why we're going to wireframe is we want to select this entire half right here. If we didn't go to wireframe when we tried to select, most likely we would just select a geometry that's facing towards us. However, since we went to wireframe, now we can select the geometry that's facing towards us as well as the geometry that is not facing towards us. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to hover our mouse about here. We're going to press the B key for uh, to activate what's called box select. We're going to left click and drag and we're going to go just slightly past that line right there. Uh, then we're going to let go and now we have all of this geometry right here selected which is what we want. The reason why we're doing this is we're about to uh, delete this geometry here we're then going to add a mirror modifier to this uh, geometry and what that's going to do is allow us to effectively do half of the amount of work that we normally would have to do as far as uh, modeling this simple female. Okay, so what we're going to do now is press X to bring up our delete menu. We're then going to choose faces to delete. Uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to hover our mouse here. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button and pull to the side. See what looks like a little wrench. This is our modifier uh, button here. So I'm going to click here. Now I'm going to click here, and by clicking here, we can select a mirror modifier and then add it to our uh, mesh or our geometry right there. So I'm going to left click. So now we can kind of see what the mirror modifier did was it basically took this geometry, mirrored it to the other side. So this is kind of like virtual geometry. It's very important that when you put the mirror modifier on, this little orange dot is directly in the center. This is your point of origin, and this is how the uh, mirror modifier new to you know take this geometry and where to place this at when i first started modeling and i started uh uh using the mirror modifier i didn't understand the importance of this uh dot right here this origin point so i had some uh, difficulties anyway with this virtual geometry right here when we look right here this basically uh shows the settings for a mirror modifier so what you want to do is put a check mark right here uh, which turns on clipping. Now what this does is this keeps our virtual geometry here from pulling apart from our actual geometry here. Also what we're going to push is this button right here and when I click this it's kind of going to make it's going to make this virtual geometry basically look like this geometry here so I click there and there you go. So now what we're going to do is press Z and then select solid to go back to solid view. Okay, what we're going to do now is hold the middle mouse button. We want to look towards the bottom of this geometry right here. I'm going to hold shift and the middle mouse button to pan the view. Now with face select on, I'm going to press C. And then I'm going to select this geometry right here. When I press C, I activate it paint select and allow me to paint these faces here. Now because we have the mirror modifier on, when I paint the faces here, the other side, basically the same thing will happen. So I'm going to right click to get out of paint select. Okay, with this geometry here selected, what we're going to do is press the W key. That brings up our specials menu again. We're then going to go to loop tool, tools. Then we're going to select circle. And uh, this just automatically pretty much take, made that uh, area that was formerly in kind of like a squarish form and just made it circular. Uh, I like doing this because I tend to think of females as being, you know, very compared to a male. The male is blocky. The, the uh, female is uh, curvy. So what we're going to do now is we're going to select front to go back to front view. 
and we can see from the front view this geometry is like sticking down a little bit I don't want that so what I'm going to do is press S to scale on the Z axis and then press zero and then left click to lock in and uh, what that does is when you have something as far as going up and down when you press S to scale on the Z axis zero it basically flattens out that area that you have selected okay so with this area still selected what we're going to do is press S to scale on the X axis and pull to the side I'm going to left click to lock in then I'm going to press S to scale on the X axis a little bit more pull to the side then left click to lock in okay what we're going to do now is roll our mouse to zoom back some I'm going to hold shift and the middle mouse button to pan up some what we're going to do now is extrude down so I'm going to press E to extrude we can see there's a line showing us the Z axis right there so we're going to pull down to about here then left click to lock in and then going to press E to extrude on the Z axis which is already there again to about here then we're going to press E to extrude one more time and bring that down to about here so we made three extrusions from where we started right here okay so now with that done we're going to click here to go to right view we're going to press a to deselect we're then going to press Z then select wireframe we're then going to press B for box select we're still on uh, face select as far as our select mode we're going to draw a box over this geometry right here okay and now with this geometry selected we're going to push this geometry forward to about here okay with this geometry still selected I'm going to press R to rotate on the X axis and I'm going to rotate this geometry to around here then left click the lock in okay now we're going to press A to deselect we're going to press B for box select and select this geometry right here then what we're going to do is take this take this manipulator and push this to so this geometry is kind of like that now what I want to do is scale this bottom geometry so that this back piece here is kind of lined up with this piece right here so I'm going to press S to scale on the Y axis and left click to lock in then I'm going to press S to scale on the Y axis again then left click to lock, left click to lock in then I'm going to pull this back so I want this to be pretty much straight up and down here and I'm aiming to have this be you know kind of like if you can imagine a line coming down from here so now what I'm going to do is press R to rotate on the X axis like this and then I'm going to left click to lock in I'll push this forward just slightly okay now what I'm going to do is click here to go to front view I'm then going to press Z and then select solid to go back to solid view I'm then going to press S to scale on the X axis I'm going to scale to the side some you see right here when I scale to the side this area right here starts to bunch up so what I'm going to do is take the manipulator and pull to the side a little bit more to increase uh, the width right here while at the same time not allowing this geometry here to bunch up okay what I'm going to do now is press A to deselect I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view I'm going to hold shift I'm going to select here as well as here okay now I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view I'm going to press E to extrude and I'm just going to extrude right along that extrusion line to about here then I'm going to left click the lock in okay so I'm going to click here to go to the right view I'm then going to press S to scale on the Y axis like this uh, you can see this geometry rotated that way so I'm just going to press R to rotate on the X axis to rotate back some then I'm going to left click the lock that and then I'm going to press S to scale on the Y axis again like this then press R to rotate on the X axis again like that I'll push this down just slightly like that okay what we're going to do now is press A to deselect we're then going to press Z to go to wireframe view I'm then going to go to vertices select I'm going to hover my mouse right here I'm then going to press B for box select and draw a box right here and then with this geometry selected here I'm going to press R to rotate on the X axis like that so this uh, line here is pretty much a uh, horizontal now is how you want it to be so I'm gonna press uh, A to deselect then I'm gonna click here to go back to front view and then gonna press Z then go to solid view okay so what you're gonna do now is hover your mouse right here you're gonna press control and then while holding control you're gonna press R you see that that line right there that's a preview line showing us where our loop cuts gonna go we're gonna left click once to 
lock in that when we left click one time, we can still move this loop cut up and down. I'm going to left click a second time to totally lock that loop cut in. Okay, with this loop cut still selected, I'm going to press S to scale on the X axis here. Then when I left click to lock in, when I scaled in, this geometry here started to spread apart a little bit. So I'm going to uh, grab the uh, manipulator here by left clicking it and then just push this geometry in uh, so it comes out to about like this. Then I'm going to press A to deselect. Okay, now what we're going to do is hold the middle mouse button, rotate the view. We're going to go to face select. We're going to select right here. If you want to zoom in easily, you can press, press and hold shift, then B. Draw a zoom box and you'll zoom right in. I'm going to hold shift and select right here just for that geometry there. I'm actually going to take the manipulator and push this towards each other. Be careful not to push too much because you don't want uh, the geometry here to cross over, so they say. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button, rotate the view. Um, then I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate this way. Then I'm going to press S to scale on the Y axis a little bit more. Then left click to lock in, maybe more than a little bit. Then I'm going to press R to rotate on the X axis some more. I'm going to left click to lock in. I'm going to zoom back. I'm going to select the right view here. I'm going to press A to deselect there. I'm going to press and hold control, then press R to put a loop cut in. I am going to uh, left click once, then left click a second time to put that loop cut uh, so it's totally locked in. Then I'm going to press S to scale on the Y axis slightly like that. Then left click to lock that in. Then I'm going to press A to deselect. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hold the Alt key and then select right here. I'm going to press R to rotate on the X axis like this. Then with that loop cut still selected, I'm going to press G twice. Because I pressed it twice, I can slide up just slightly. Then I'm going to left click to lock in. Okay, what we're going to do now is press A to deselect. We're going to go right here and, and go to face select. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view. I'm then going to press C for paint select and select this geometry right here. I'm going to right click to get out of paint select. I'm going to press X to bring up the delete menu. And then I'm going to choose faces to delete. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to vertices select. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view. I'm going to select here, hold shift. While holding shift still, I'm selecting here as well as here. Now I'm holding the middle mouse button to rotate the view. I'm going to press E to extrude and extrude out to about like here. I'm going to left click to lock in. Then with vertices select still one, I'm going to select here. I'm going to hold shift. Select here, I'm still holding shift. Then I'm going to select here as well as here and I'm still holding shift. So with these four vertices selected, I'm going to press F to fill the space in between those four vertices. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to turn towards the back. Okay, then I'm going to press A to deselect. With vertices select still one, I'm going to select here, hold shift. I'm still holding shift, selecting here, as well as here, as well as here. I'm still holding shift. Just let go of shift. And I'm going to press F to fill in the space between those four uh, vertices right there. Okay, I'm going to press A to deselect. I'm going to go to edge select by selecting right here. I'm then going to hold alt. Because I am holding the alt key, I can select this entire loop. So now when I select right here, I select that whole loop right there. With that whole edge loop selected, I'm going to hold the middle mouse button and rotate back towards the front. Okay, what we're going to do now is select front to go to front view. We're then going to press E to extrude on the Z axis and come straight down about to here. Then left click to lock in. We're going to pull this out to the side, this being this uh, edge loop right here. Uh, what we're going to do then is press S to scale on the Z axis 0 to flatten that area out. Then I'm going to left click to lock in. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button just to take a look. Uh, right here, I'm going to press S to scale on the Y axis a little bit like that. Then I'm going to left click to lock in. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to come back towards the front. Okay, with this edge loop still selected, if I hold the middle mouse button uh, so you can see a decent view of this geometry, you can see the shape is not nice. So to fix that, what we're going to do is press W, which brings up our specials menu. We're then going to go to loop tools. We're then going to select circle. And you can see by selecting that, now we have a nice circular shape right here. So with that done, we're going to select here to go to front view. 
Okay, and everything looks fine for now in front view. Then we're going to select here to go to right view. Now, uh, when you're dealing with uh, characters, pretty much what you want to do, when your legs first start out, you don't want your legs coming straight down. You actually want uh, your legs being pushed forward. So basically what we're going to do is take uh, the manipulator and with this edge loop still selected, we're going to push this out to almost match up with this right here. So this geometry here, we're going to push out to about there. So we're just taking our selector and now you can see, you know, pretty much that's, you know, what we have here right now. Okay, so what we're going to do now is select front to go back to front view. We're going to roll the mouse wheel to zoom back. We're then going to press E to extrude. Uh, then I'm going to left click the lock in. And when I extruded, I didn't choose to extrude out. I made new geometry. And because I have that new geometry, I can take my manipulator and just push down. Uh, my reason for doing this, sometimes I'll extrude out. Sometimes I just like knowing... Uh, I guess I like having the feel of knowing this is going straight down, even though I can do that with an in access. I don't know. Anyway, you're going to take it down about like this. Uh, with this edge still selected, we're still on uh, edge select. You're going to press S to scale on the X axis like this. You're going to left click the lock in. Then we're going to select the right view like this. You can see this is too wide, so we're going to press uh, S to scale on the Y axis like this and then left click the lock in. Okay, so what we're gonna do now with this geometry here selected is when you first extrude the legs, you want this part to go forward. This part right here, you actually want to go back some. See this line right here? We want this line to pretty much be in alignment with this line right here. So we're gonna take the manipulator and pull back to about there. Okay, what we're gonna do now is click here to go back to front view. I'm actually going to press S to scale on the X axis to make this a little bit more narrow. I'm then going to press uh, E to extrude on the Z axis, bring this down about like that. Then left click the lock in. I'm going to pull this to the side a little. I'm then going to click here to go back to uh, right view. And basically, this is the bottom of the knee here. We don't want this to be directly underneath here. So this geometry right here, we don't want an alignment with this. So what we want to do is actually pull this back like that. Okay, now what we're going to do is click front to go back to the front view. We're then going to press E to extrude on the Z axis to about down here. We're then going to press S to scale on the X axis like that. Pull out to the side a little bit more. We're going to select the right view to go into the right view. We're then going to press uh, S to scale on the Y axis. We're going to pull back. We pretty much don't want this to be in front of the knee there. We're going to click here to go back to the front view. We're going to press E to extrude on the Z axis. Then we're going to press S to scale on the X axis like this. Then we're going to select the right view. And then we're going to press S to scale on the Y axis like that. Then left click the lock in. Okay, what we're going to do now is click here to go back to front view. I'm going to hold shift and minimize button to pan. I'm then going to press E to extrude on the Z axis about to here. Then I'm going to left click the lock in. Okay, so what we're going to do now is press shift B. Then we're going to draw a zoom box. And what we want to do is take these two edges here and have them point more forward where now they're kind of pointing like this way. And when I say, when I, what I mean when I say they're pointing this way is we're going to extrude a foot from here, or the beginnings of a foot. So with the geometry facing this way, we'll go that way. I want it to go more this way. So what we're going to do is press O. O turns on what's called the proportional editing tool. Okay, what the proportional editing tool does is it allows you to manipulate more than one vertice, edge, or face at a time. Uh, with this geometry here, I'm going to press G. I press G so I can see that circle. That circle represents the area of influence of the proportional editing tool. So what I'm going to do is press R to rotate on the Z axis. So by doing that, I'm rotating the entire bottom edge loop uh, more forward, right? So I didn't left click to lock in that rotation yet. So I'm going to roll my mouse wheel. And as I roll the mouse wheel, Hopefully you can see the geometry uh, 
adapting to the proportional editing tool. And I'm just going to left click to lock that rotation in. Okay, so with that done, what we're going to do is hold the middle mouse button to uh, rotate the view. We're rotating the view just so we can get more of a kind of 3D view. We're going to press A to deselect. We still have the uh, edge select on, which is good. However, this blue circle here shows you the proportional editing tool is still on. We don't want that on currently, so I'm going to hover my mouse over this window. In Blender, it's important where your mouse is at because your shortcut keys are affected by where your mouse is at. So I'm going to press O. And now you can see that that blue circles is no longer, you know, blue and now it's, you know, a gray circle. So the proportional editing tool is, is currently turned off, which is what we want. Okay, so we still have edge select on, which is good. We're going to select right here. I'm then going to press and hold control then space to bring up our manipulator menu. I'm going to select here to temporarily take away the manipulator. Manipulator. I'm going to hold shift then select here. Then I'm going to press and hold control, then press space to bring the manipulator back. I'm then going to press E to extrude, then left click to lock in. I created new geometry, though it doesn't look like I did anything. When I press that E, I created new geometry. Now I could have extruded that out. I chose not to, just because I would rather for now use the manipulator. So I'm going to bring this out like this. Then I'm going to push this down some. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to turn to the side. Let me actually pull this back some. Uh, what I'm going to do now is press E to extrude on the Z axis bring that down some like that then I'm gonna left click the lock in I'm then gonna press E to extrude on the Y axis to extrude back like this I'm gonna left click the lock in again I'm gonna hold the middle mouse button so I can get a better view okay you see how this geometry isn't flat I want this geometry flat as far as going that way so what we're gonna do is press S to scale on the Y axis 0 and then left click to lock in and that's just an easy way to do what you see there. The geometry is flattened out as far as going that way. Okay, now with those two edges still selected, I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to get a better view. I'm then going to press Shift B. I'm going to then draw a zoom box. Uh, and I'm going to um, there. I'm then going to hold Shift, and then I'm going to select here. Still holding Shift, then I'm going to select here. Then I'm going to uh, press and hold Control, then press E. This brings up our edges menu. I'm then going to select bridge. Uh, edge loops okay now what we're going to do is press A to deselect I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view see this line right here we need to have an edge right here to match up with that then we have this right here so we need another edge to match up right here so that's pretty easy to do we're going to press and hold control then press R I'm going to left click once because I left click one time I can move this edge loop so I'm going to move it like that then I'm going to left click to get that to totally lock in I'm going to hover my mouse right here. I'm going to press and hold control, then press R while still holding control. I'm going to left click one time because I left clicked one time. I can still move this edge loop. So I'm going to pull it down towards this way. Then I'm going to left click again to get that to totally lock in. Okay, now that we have this edge to match up with this edge here, and then this edge here to match up with this edge here, what we can do is press uh, A to deselect. With edge select still one, we can hold alt, select this edge right here. Then we can use a very cool tool in uh, Blender called the grid fill tool. So we're going to hold control. Then while holding control, press F. This brings up our faces menu. And then we can select right here, which is uh, grid fill. Now, if you're new to Blender or new to 3D modeling, you might not totally be able to appreciate that normally if I selected this edge loop here and I pressed F to fill basically what we would have was a flat plane right here um, so pretty much what we would have to do or one of the, the usual ways you would you would do this anyway maybe not have to do it is you would go to vertices select you would select here the vertice here the vertice here the vertice here then you would press F to fill you know do the same thing here and the same thing here the grid fill allows us to just select all of this and then blender kind of knows with the grid fill tool to fill this geometry in but to also put this additional geometry in as well okay so what we're going to do now is press a to deselect i'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view with edge select still on i'm going to hold alt select the edge right here i'm then going to press and hold control while holding control i'm going to press the f key and then i'm going to choose the grid fill to fill in this geometry here as well 
Okay, now we're going to press A to deselect. We're going to select this edge right here. We're going to push this out to the side a little bit. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button. I'm going to select this edge here. I'm going to hold shift in the middle mouse button to pan. I'm going to pull this to the side some. We're then going to go to face select. We're going to select here, hold shift, then select here. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to get more of a uh, 3D view. I'm going to hold control and then hold the middle mouse button to pull back. That gives you more of a smoother uh, zoom back. I'm then going to press E to extrude on the Y axis to extrude extrude this geometry here out. Then I'm going to left click to lock that in. Okay, I'm going to press A to deselect. I'm going to roll the mouse wheel to zoom back. I'm going to hold shift and the middle mouse button to pan. I'm then going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view. I'm going to hold shift and the middle mouse button to pan the view down. Okay, what we want to do now is go back to edge select. We want to select this edge here. We're going to hold shift and then select this edge here as well. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to uh, you know get a better view. We're going to take the manipulator and pull this back some. Hold the middle mouse button just to get a better view again. Then we're going to take the manipulator and push straight down like this. See how this is overlapping here? We don't want that, so we're going to hold the middle mouse button. Then we're going to pull this back some more like that. Okay, that's what we want for now. Okay, so what we're going to do now is press A to deselect. We're going to hover our mouse right here. We're going to press Control. Then while holding Control, we're going to press R. That brings up a loop cut preview. We're going to roll our mouse wheel one time to put another loop cut in. Then we're going to left click once, then left click a second time to uh, lock both of those uh, loop cuts in. Okay, what we're going to do now is press A to deselect. We're then going to select here, hold shift, then select here. We're then going to hold the middle mouse button to get a better view. We're going to take our manipulator and pull back some like this, and then up some like this. Then I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to take a look. Then I'm going to press uh, A to deselect. Okay, so the lower body is coming along. So what we're going to do is click here to go to front view. Uh, we're going to go to face select. You see this geometry here, how it's kind of uh, twisted up. Uh, when you first use your loop tool for uh, circle to make this circular shape, you can press, uh, you could select this edge loop. Uh, then you could press R to rotate on the Z axis so you don't have this. Or you can go along like we did here. Uh, you can have face select on, you can hold alt, select this geometry by having face select, select on and then holding alt. Then you can press X to bring up the delete menu, then choose faces to delete. Then you can go to edge select, hold shift, select this edge loop right here. Whoops, I held shift. I want to hold shift and alt, so I'm holding shift and alt now. So I select that entire edge loop there. Now I'm holding shift and alt at the same time, so I select this edge loop here. Then I can press control, then E, and then go to uh, bridge edge loops. And now we have that geometry filled in, but without it being uh, twisted around like it was. Okay, what we want to do now is press A to deselect. I'm going to hover my mouse here. I'm going to press control, then R to put uh, a loop cut in. I'm going to roll the mouse one time put another loop cut in, then I'm going to left click to lock in, left click again to totally lock in. Okay, I'm going to press shift, then B, then draw a zoom box right here. I'm then going to press A to deselect. I'm going to uh, hold the middle mouse button to turn to the side. I'm going to hold shift, then select here. I'm going to press and hold control, then space, temporarily take away the manipulator. Hold shift while I'm selecting these edges here. So I selected these four edges. I'm then going to press and hold control, then press space, select the manipulator to bring the, to bring the manipulator back. That whole thing I did was just to temporarily, temporarily take the manipulator away so I could easily select. I'm then going to take the manipulator and push out here for some shape for the knees. Okay, I'm going to press A to deselect. I'm going to roll the mouse wheel to zoom back. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view. I'm then going to press shift B to draw a zoom box right here. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view some more. I'm going to, with edge select on, I'm going to press C for paint select. I'm going to roll my mouse wheel to shrink the uh, paint selection uh, area. I'm going to select here as well as here. I'm then going to right click to get out of paint select. Okay, with that edge selected there, I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to turn the view. 
I'm going to pull back about like that. I'm then going to go to vertice select. I'm going to select this vertice. I'm going to pull this vertice back like that. I'm going to push this down slightly. I'm going to select this vertice. I'm going to hold shift in the middle mouse button so we can see better. I'm going to pull this up slightly. Then I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view just to take a look. Okay, now I'm going to press A to deselect. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button, rotate the view. I'm then going to go to face select. I'm going to select here, hold shift, then select here. I'm then going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view. Then I'm going to press S to scale on the X axis, zero, and then left click to lock in. Okay, I'm going to select front view. I'm then going to take the manipulator and pull out to the side slightly. I'm then going to press E to extrude, left click to lock in. I just created new geometry there, though it doesn't look like I created new geometry. That new geometry that I created, I'm going to take the manipulator and pull out to the side. I'm then going to press R to rotate on the Y axis to rotate uh, these faces here like that. I'm then going to take this manipulator and push up like this. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to press A to deselect. I'm going to hover my mouse here. I'm then going to hold control, then press R to put a loop cut in. I'm going to left click to lock in. Because I left click one time, I can move this loop cut. So I'm going to move this a little bit closer to the body. And then left click again to totally lock in. Okay, I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view. I'm going to press A to deselect. I'm going to hover my mouse here. I'm going to press control, then press R to put a loop cut in. I'm then going to left click once, then left click a second time to totally lock that loop cut in. Okay, now I'm going to press A to deselect. I'm going to select right here to go to face select. I'm going to hover my mouse here. I'm then going to press the C button for paint select. I'm going to roll the mouse wheel up a little bit to increase the area for the paint select. I'm going to left click here to select that whole area there. I'm going to right click to get out of paint select. Okay, with these faces selected, I'm then going to press W to bring up our specials menu. I'm then going to use our loop tools and then go to a circle. So now that is a nice circular shape right there. I'm then going to press E to extrude, left click to lock in. I just created new geometry. Now I'm going to press S to scale in that new geometry. Then I'm going to left click to lock in. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is press A to deselect. I'm going to select here to go to the front view. I'm then going to press Z, then go to wireframe view. I'm going to hold control, hold the right mouse button, and draw a lasso select right here. To grab all of this geometry right there. Okay, now what I'm going to do is press the Z key and then select solid. Okay, I'm going to hold shift, then select here as well as here, as well as here. I'm going to hold the mouse button to take a look towards the back. I'm going to hold shift, then select there, holding the middle mouse button again. Now I'm holding the middle mouse button to turn back towards the front. Okay, I'm holding the middle mouse button again. I'm going to press R to rotate on the x-axis. Tilt the arms back like that. And I'm going to left click the lock in. I'm holding the middle mouse button to take a look. I'm holding the middle mouse button again. Holding the middle mouse button again. Then I'm going to press A to deselect. Okay, so we just deselected this geometry. However, we want to make sure we're on face select and select these four faces right here. So I'm going to press uh, C to activate paint select. I'm going to select those faces right there. I'm going to right click to get out of paint select. Okay, I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to turn to the side. I'm then going to press E to extrude, and then I'm going to just let this arm ride right along that extrusion. Then I'm going to left click the lock in. Okay, with that geometry still selected there, I'm going to press S to scale. Then I'm going to press E to extrude. Out like that. I'm going to left click the lock in. I'm going to hold the mouse button to rotate the view. I'm going to take the manipulator and push this forward some. I'm then going to press R to rotate on the X axis to rotate that uh, those uh, faces there just taking a look at that geometry rolling the mouse wheel to zoom back holding the middle mouse button to rotate the view okay I'm going to roll the mouse wheel to zoom back some I'm going to hold shift and the middle mouse button to pan the view up some with this geometry here still selected I'm going to press E to extrude extrude out to about 
here then I'm gonna left click to lock that in okay what we're gonna do now is press A to deselect that geometry there I'm going to press shift B to draw a zoom box right here to zoom in here I'm gonna hover my mouse here I'm gonna press control then while holding control I'm gonna press R to put a loop cut there I'm gonna roll the mouse wheel one time to put another loop cut in I'm gonna left click then I'm gonna left click a second time to totally lock those loop cuts in okay what we're gonna do with these loop cuts is a special kind of scale we're gonna press S to scale we're then gonna press shift and then hold shift then we're gonna press Z now you can see those lines going out in all directions basically what's going on is we press shift to scale however when we press shift Z we said scale in all directions except for Z so what we're gonna do is push in now and we're scaling on every direction except for Z so then we're gonna left click to lock in then we're gonna take the manipulator and actually push in like this okay what we're gonna do now is we're going to press A to deselect then we're gonna select right here to go to front view we're then going to press shift to B then draw a zoom box right here we're then going to go to vertice select we're going to select this vertice here hold shift then select this vertice here as well okay what we're going to do now is click right here to go to right view I'm going to roll the mouse wheel out uh, I'm then going to press O to turn on the proportional editing tool I'm then going to press G so we can see the area of influence. I'm then going to roll the mouse wheel in to shrink that area of influence. I'm then going to left click uh, to lock that influence in at that current size. I'm now going to press shift and B to draw a zoom box. Then I'm going to press G to uh, let us be able to see the area of influence. I'm going to roll the mouse wheel in shrink that area of influence I just rolled it a little bit again then I'm going to press Z so we can strain on the Z axis then I'm just going to pull down just like this I'm going to roll the mouse wheel up just slightly then I'm going to left click to lock that in then I'm going to press A to deselect okay what we're going to do is hold the middle mouse button rotate the view I'm going to move the mouse here I'm going to press C for paint select I'm going to paint right here I'm going to right click to get out of paint select we're still we still have the proportional editing tool on I'm going to press G and then Z to move this geometry down some then I'm going to left click the lock in hold the middle mouse button rotate the view and then push out a little bit like that okay I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view I'm then going to press A to deselect that geometry right there okay I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view a little bit more I'm going to press C for paint select I'm going to select this geometry right here I'm going to right click to get out of paint select I'm then going to push down slightly like that okay what I'm going to do now is press A to deselect I'm then going to press O to turn off the proportional editing tool I'm going to roll the mouse wheel to zoom back I'm going to hold shift in the middle mouse button to pan the view up okay now I'm going to go to edge select I'm going to hover my mouse here I'm going to hold alt then select this edge right here I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view slightly I'm then going to press R to rotate on the X axis like that okay I'm going to hover my mouse right here I'm then going to press C for paint select I'm then going to hold my middle mouse button and then deselect these edges right here then I'm gonna right click to get out of paint select okay we had this edge loop selected so the reason why I held the middle mouse button to deselect here was so that when I hold the middle mouse button we would still have this geometry here selected so I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to turn back some I'm going to just pull this back a little bit holding the middle mouse button just to take a look I'm then going to press R to rotate on the X axis just to rotate those edges a little then I'm going to left click to lock in hold the middle mouse button take a look okay I'm going to press A to deselect I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view okay I'm gonna hover my mouse right here I'm then gonna hold control then press R to put a loop cut in I'm gonna left click one time because I left click one time I still can move this loop cut so I'm gonna move this loop cut down to here now I'm gonna left click the second time to totally lock that loop cut in okay now I'm gonna press A to deselect I'm gonna hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view 
we still have edge select on which is good i'm going to hold alt i'm then going to select this edge right here i'm now going to press r to rotate on the x axis and we're basically taking this so it's this line here is horizontal now okay i'm going to press a to deselect i'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view okay so we still have edge select on so we're going to select this edge push down some like that okay then we're going to press a to deselect then we're going to select this edge and then push down a little bit like that okay so what we're going to do now is press a to deselect we're then going to hold alt select here to grab this entire edge loop we're then going to press c for paint select we're going to deselect this geometry right here and then right click to get out of paint select Okay, with this geometry selected, we're going to take our manipulator and push straight down like that. Okay, what we're going to do now is press A to deselect. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view. With edge select on, I'm going to hold alt. I'm going to select right here. Then I'm going to take this manipulator and pull up some like that. Okay, I'm going to press A to deselect. I'm then going to hold alt again. Then I'm going to select right here. I'm then going to take the manipulator and pull straight up like that. I'm then going to press S to scale on the X axis like that, then left click to lock in. Okay, now I'm going to press A to deselect. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view. I'm going to go to face select. I'm going to press C for paint select. I'm going to select all of this geometry right here. I'm going to right click to get it out of uh, paint select. I'm then going to go to tools. I'm going to select smooth vertex. And then I'm going to click, click again and again and again. Hold the middle mouse button to take a look. I'm going to press A to deselect. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to turn back towards the front. See a front view. Okay, now I'm going to press C for paint select again. I'm going to select all this geometry right here. Then I'm going to right click to get out of paint select. I'm then going to press E to extrude. And then I'm going to press S to scale in the area that I extruded. Push in a little bit more. And then I'm going to left click to lock in. I'm going to take the manip manipulator and push in some like this. I'm then going to press S to scale on the Z axis, something like that. Then I'm going to left click to lock that in. Okay, now we're going to press A to deselect. We're going to go to edge select. We're going to select this edge right here. We're going to pull this out to the side, some like that. Okay, now we're going to press A to deselect. We're then going to go to face select. We're going to select right here, hold shift, select here, as well as here. We're going to hold the middle mouse button and turn to the side. Then we're going to push forward a little bit like that. Then we're going to press A to deselect. I'm now going to go to edge select. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button and turn towards the side. I'm going to select right here. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button and turn again. I'm going to hold shift, select right here. Then I'm going to pull to the side like that. Okay, I'm going to press A to deselect. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to turn towards the back. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button again. We're on edge select, so I'm going to select right here. I'm now going to hold the middle mouse button. I am going to hold control. Then I'm going to select right here. And what happened when I held control was because I had the edge selected here and I held control and then selected here, when you hold control, uh, Blender takes the shortest point. So with that geometry selected, I'm just going to push this in some like that. Then I'm going to press A to deselect. Okay, now I'm going to hold the middle mouse button and turn to back towards the front. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button again. We're still on edge select. I'm going to hold alt. I'm going to select right here. I'm just going to take the manipulator and push down like that. Okay, I'm going to press A to deselect. Then I'm going to press shift B. Then I'm going to draw a zoom box right here. I'm going to hover the mouse here. I'm going to press and hold control, then press R. I'm going to left click one time because I left clicked one time. I still can move this loop cut. I'm going to move it up something like that. Then I'm going to left click a second time. I'm go then I'm going to go to face select, select here, hold shift, then select here. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button, ro rotate the view. I'm then going to press W to bring up the specials menu. Then go to loop tools and then select flatten. Okay, I'm going to press A to deselect. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view. I'm then going to hold shift, then select here as well as here. I'm then going to press W to bring up our specials menu. I'm then going to go to loop tools, then select flatten. I'm going to press uh, A to deselect. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to turn back towards this way. I'm then going to select here, hold shift, then select here. 
I'm then going to press E to extrude and then just extrude right along that uh, preview line. Then uh, left click to lock in. I'm then going to press A to deselect. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view. Okay, now I'm going to select here, hold shift, then select here. Then I'm going to press E to extrude, ride right along that extrusion line. Then left click to lock in. Then I'm going to press A to deselect. Okay, I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view. I'm going to hold shift and the middle mouse button to pan the view. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view a little bit more. I'm then going to press C to activate paint select. I'm going to roll the mouse wheel to shrink paint select. I'm going to roll it a little bit more and I'm going to use that paint select to select all of these faces right here. I'm then going to right click to get out of paint select. Okay, I'm now going to press W to bring up our specials menu. I'm then going to go to loop tools, then I'm going to select flatten. Now I'm going to use a special kind of extrude. I'm going to hold alt then press E. This brings up our extrude menu. I'm then going to choose individual faces. And I'm going to left click to lock in. Because I choose extrude individual faces, instead of all of these faces when they extrude out coming out as one piece, now they'll actually come out as one separate piece per each face. Basically what's going on here is we're about to extrude some fingers out. Uh, so what we first did was we flattened this area. The reason why we flattened the area out is because we wanted the normals to be flat so that we could create the new geometry which we already did but then uh, get the geometry going in the direction of the normals and we wanted all the fingers going in the, uh, the same way. So this is the default pivot point of Blender, which is the median point. We're going to click here, and then we're going to change this pivot point to individual origins. Because we change this to individual origins, we'll be able to scale each of these pieces down uh, separately or individually. Okay, we already made our new geometry. Currently, the manipulator is set up so that it's going to make it difficult for us to pull in the direction of our normals. So what we're going to do is we're going to click here. We're going to change this global transform orientation to normal transform orientation. Okay, now we can pull our geometry out uh, in the direction that our normals are facing. Before we do that, I'm going to hold the mouse button so you can see. What we want to do is we want to take that new geometry that we made and then press S to scale so that we have some space between the fingers. So I'm going to hold the mouse button just to rotate the view a little bit more. Now I'm going to take the manipulator and pull out just slightly. Okay, now we're going to press uh, E to extrude and then just bring this geometry out like this. Then I'm going to left click to lock in. And now what we're going to do is we're going to hold shift, select here, then hold shift, then select here. And then we're going to just pull these fingers a little bit further out. I'm now going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view. And then I'm going to press A to deselect. Okay, now with that done, what we're going to do is go to Edge Select. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button. We're going to hold Shift as well as Alt. Then we're going to select here. We're also going to select here. We're going to let go of Shift and let go of Alt. Hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view. Okay, now we're going to hold Shift as well as Alt again and then select here. Now let go of Shift and Alt. Now I'm holding the middle mouse button to rotate the view again. Holding the middle mouse button to rotate the view again. Now I'm going to hold Shift and Alt again. Then I'm going to select right here. Okay, now I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view. And then I'm going to take the manipulator and pull the geometry like this. That geometry is being uh, currently selected edges there. I'm now going to go to Face Select. I'm going to select here, hold shift, then select here. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view. Okay, now I'm going to press E to extrude on the Y axis like this. Then I'm going to left click to lock in. Okay, now I want to flatten that geometry out. So I'm going to press S to scale on the Y axis, zero, and then left click to lock in. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to click here and we're going to change the pivot point from individual origins back to Blender's default pivot point, which is the median point. Okay, in Blender, if you uh, want to scale along an object's normals, you can just push that axis that you want to scale along twice. So what we're going to do for forming this thumb is we're going to press S to scale, 
and then Y twice. Then I'm going to left click the lock in. Okay, now I'm going to hold the mouse button to rotate the view. Then I want to scale this along the X axis um, as far as the normals for forming this thumb. So I'm going to press S to scale and then X twice. And I'm going to left click the lock in. Okay, now I'm going to press E to extrude, left click to lock in. Then I'm just going to pull that geometry out using uh, the manipulator. And I'm going to hold the middle mouse button just to rotate the view to take a look. Okay, now I'm going to hold the middle mouse button and rotate the view. I'm then going to press A to deselect. And then I'm going to hover my mouse here. I'm going to press and hold control, then press R. I'm going to roll the mouse wheel one time. Then I'm going to left click once, left click again to totally lock in. And then I'm going to hover my mouse here, press A to deselect. I'm going to hold control, then press R. Then I'm going to roll the mouse one time, then left click once, left click twice to totally lock in. Then I'm going to press A to deselect. Okay, I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view. I'm going to hover my mouse here. I'm going to hold control, then press R. Then I'm going to roll the mouse wheel one time, then left click once, then left click a second time to totally lock in. Okay, then I'm going to press A to deselect. I'm going to hover my mouse here. I'm going to hold control, then press R. Roll the mouse one time, then left click once, left click a second time to totally lock in. Okay, I'm going to press A to deselect. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hold uh, Shift as well as Alt. Then I'm going to select all of these edge loops that I put in these fingers here. Okay, so I'm holding Shift, then I'm holding Alt, then I'm going to select here, select here, as well as the rest of all of those edge loops. Okay, with those edge loops selected, what I'm going to do is use something called the Bevel Tool. I'm going to hold Control, then press B, and then pull with my mouse, and then left click to lock in. What the Bevel Tool does is it takes a uh, edges and splits them into basically two edges. So I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view. So basically what the bevel tool did was it made knuckles for us. So I'm going to take the manipulator and then just push up some like that. Okay, so I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view. I'm then going to press A to deselect uh, that geometry we had selected there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hover my mouse here, hold Alt, select this edge right here then I'm going to hold control then press B then pull slightly then left click to lock in and then just push up slightly like that then press A to deselect okay now what we're going to do is roll the mouse wheel to zoom back hold the middle mouse button to turn to the side roll the mouse wheel to zoom back some more okay then we're going to press Z then select wireframe mode we're then going to uh, hold control, hold the right mouse button, select all this area right here. I'm then going to hold the mouse button to get a better view. I'm going to push up some like this. Then I'm going to press S to scale. Push up some more like that. Push forward a little bit. Press S to scale a little bit more and then left click the lock and then I'm going to press A to deselect. Then I'm going to hold control, hold the right mouse button again, draw a lasso select, and then press S to scale down some a little bit more, then push up. Then I'm going to press A to deselect, then Z, then go to solid uh, view mode, and I'm holding the middle mouse button just to take a look. Okay, what we're going to do now is press Shift B, then draw a zoom box right here. We're then going to go to uh, vertices select. We're going to grab this vertice, push to the side right there. We're then going to go to edge select. We're going to select right here. We're going to change our transform orientation from normal back to Blender's default, which is global. We're then going to pull this to the side like that. Okay, what we're going to do now is press A to deselect. We're then going to go to face select. We're then going to hold shift, then select here as well as here. Okay, what we're going to do now is temporarily turn off clipping.
We're then going to press E to extrude, then left click to lock in. We're then going to press S to scale, like that, then left click to lock in. We're then going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view slightly. We're then going to press A to deselect. I'm going to hover the mouse right here. I'm going to hold control, then press R to put a loop cut right there. Then I'm going to left click once and then left click a second time to totally lock in. Okay, what we're going to do now is go back to face select. We're going to press C for paint select. I'm going to roll the mouse wheel to make the paint select area a little bit bigger. Then I'm going to left click right here to select that geometry there. Then I'm going to right click to get it out of paint select. Okay, with that geometry selected, we're going to press W to bring up our specials menu. We're then going to uh, go to loop tools and then select circle. Okay, what we're going to do now is change uh, Blender's default transform orientation, which is global, to uh, normal transform orientation. Then I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view. I'm going to take the manipulator and pull forward a little bit, just like that. Okay, now I'm going to press E to extrude, left click to lock in. Then I'm going to press S to scale. And I take the manipulator and pull out some. Then I'm going to press E to extrude, left click to lock in. Then I'm going to press S to scale. Then I'm going to pull out some. And we can press S to scale this down a little bit more. And then left click to lock in. Okay, I'm going to press A to deselect. I'm also going to put a check mark here to turn clipping back on. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to press Shift, then B. Draw a zoom box right here. I'm then going to go to Edge Select. I'm going to hold Alt and then select this edge right here. Okay, with that edge selected, I'm going to hold Control, then press B, and then bevel that edge like that. Then I'm going to left click to lock in. Now I'm going to press A to deselect. I'm going to hover my mouse here. Then I'm going to hold Control, then press R, and then I'm going to roll my mouse wheel one time to put uh, two loop cuts in. Then I'm going to left click to lock in. Okay, now I'm going to press A to deselect. I'm going to roll the mouse wheel back. I'm going to hold shift and middle mouse button to pan. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate. I'm going to hover my mouse here. I'm going to hold control and then press R to put a loop cut in. Then I'm going to left click one time because I left click one time. I can still move this loop cut. I'm going to pull that all the way down and then left click a second time to get that to lock in, to totally lock in. I'm then going to click here and change our transform orientation from the normal orientation back to Blender's default transform orientation, which is global. Okay, now I'm going to press A to deselect. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view. I'm going to hold shift and middle mouse button to pan down. I'm going to hover the mouse right here. I'm going to hold control, then press R, then left click to lock in, left click a second time to totally lock in. Then I'm going to hold Alt, then press S. Pull down a little bit, not too much. Then left click to lock in just so the shape, there's a little bit of shape to that arm. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to press A to deselect. I'm going to hover here. I'm going to hover here. Then I'm going to hold Control, hold R, left click to lock in. I'm going to push up just slightly. Left click a second time to totally lock in. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to. to uh, just get a different view. Then I'm going to hold Alt, then press S. I'm going to push down some. Like that. Then left click to lock in. And I'm going to press A to deselect. Okay, and I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view. I'm going to go to face select. I'm going to press Shift B, then draw a zoom box right here. I'm going to press C to activate paint select. Then I'm going to select, this, select that geometry right there. I'm going to right click to get out of paint select. Then I'm going to select smooth vertex right here. I'm then going to go to edge select here. Hold the middle mouse button, rotate the view. I'm going to press A to deselect. I'm going to hold alt, then select that edge loop right there. I'm holding the middle mouse button just to rotate the view. I'm then going to select smooth vertex just one time right there. I'm holding the middle mouse button to take a look. I'm then going to press A to deselect. Okay, I'm going to roll the mouse wheel back. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view a little bit more. I'm going to select right here. I'm then going to hold control. and then going to select this edge right here. 
then I'm gonna hold them in the mouse button, rotate the view. I'm gonna push in some here like that. I'm then gonna press A to deselect. Okay, I'm gonna roll the mouse wheel to zoom back. I'm gonna hold shift in the middle mouse button to pan up. Okay, I'm gonna roll the mouse wheel to zoom back. I'm gonna hold the middle mouse button to rotate back towards the front. Okay, I'm gonna press shift B, then draw a zoom box around the whole character just to zoom in a little bit. I'm then gonna press A to deselect. I'm then gonna press S to scale on the X axis. Like that, then I'm gonna left click to lock in. Then I'm gonna take the manipulator and then just push in some like this and then press A to deselect. Okay, now what we're gonna do is hover here, hold control, then press R to put a loop cut in. I'm gonna left click once, move up slightly, then left click again to totally lock in. Okay, so what you're gonna do now is press A to deselect. You're gonna hold them in the mouse button to rotate towards the back. Okay, now I'm going to press Shift B to draw a zoom box right here. I'm going to make sure I'm on Edge Select. I'm going to select here. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button. Now I'm going to hold Shift then select here. Now I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to uh, rotate the view. Okay, I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view a little bit more. I'm going to pull this back some. Then I'm going to pull this up some like that. Hold the middle mouse button just to take a look. Okay, I'm going to press A to deselect. I'm going to hold shift to the middle mouse button to pan down. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view. I'm going to select this edge right here. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view some more. I'm going to pull back like this. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view. I'm going to select this edge right here. Hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view. Pull back some like that. Okay, I'm going to press A to deselect. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view. I'm going to select right here. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view again. I'm then going to take the manipulator and push forward like that. I'm then going to press A to deselect. Okay, I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view. I'm going to hold shift in the middle mouse button to pan up. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view again. I'm going to temporarily turn off clipping. I'm going to go to face select. I'm going to press C for paint select. I'm going to grab these nine faces right here. I'm going to right click get out of paint select. Okay, I'm going to press E to extrude, left click to lock in. I'm then going to press S to scale, then left click to lock in. I'm then going to put a check mark here to turn clipping back on again. Okay, with this geometry selected, I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view. I'm then going to take the manipulator and pull straight back. I'm then going to press A to deselect. Okay, what we're going to do now is hold the middle mouse button just to rotate the view back towards the front. I'm going to hold control and hold the middle mouse button to do a smooth zoom back. I'm going to hold shift in the middle mouse button to pan up some. I'm going to hold control in the middle mouse button to zoom back some more again. Okay, so now that all the basic geometry is in, we'll press A to select everything. We'll hold control, then press 2. That'll put a... Uh, subdivision surface modifier on which with a view of two we'll then press Z and then select shade smooth uh, we'll then go to the subdivision surface modifier options which are right here we'll click this button right here which will make it look like the subdivision surface modifier has been applied to the model okay and now that we have uh, the subdivision surface modifier applied as well as the smooth shading what we can do is click here and then go into scope mode okay typically once you've made it to scope mode in my mind you've made it past the hard stuff you have the uh, geometry that you need uh, to use the tools in scope mode to quickly uh, make your character end up how you want it to be Okay, in scope mode, some of the tools that I find particularly useful are the uh, inflate tools. Uh, I'm going to zoom in here. So, uh, using the inflate tools on the hand are uh, pretty effective. If you press the F key and drag, you'll make your influence bigger for your inflate tools. Uh, obviously, things like this uh, is useful. You can also click here, go to grab mode, and uh, you know manipulate your character as far as uh sizes and proportions uh, the grab brush is probably the 
absolute best brush as far as uh, manipulating your character as far as I'm concerned. If you want certain parts of your character to stand out more, like for instance this, this line right here, what you can do is click here and then go to the uh, crease brush and you can see that just like that, uh, how it just defines that area uh, very quickly and easily, the uh, crease brush. Okay, as far as dealing with uh, issues like this, it's very easy in scope mode to go to the smooth brush. This is the strength of the smooth brush. Most of the time I find that it's too strong, so I'm going to take that down. But once it's down, you can just fairly easily, you know, click in a place and deal with issues. I'll hold shift to the middle mouse button to pan down. Kind of like these shoulders. So I'm going to hold the middle mouse button and I'm actually roll the middle mouse button in and just click here. Okay, and once you've done some fixes, what you might want to do is click here, then go back to edit mode, then add some more geometry in. So I'm going to hover my mouse here, I'm going to hold control, then press R, then left click to lock in, left click again to totally lock in, then I'm going to press S to scale on the X axis just to make this neck a little bit thinner, then I'll actually push in a little bit like that, then I'll press A to deselect. Okay, we'll roll the mouse wheel out, I'll hold shift on the mouse button and pan, and what we'll do is we'll just uh, put two loop cuts right here left click to lock in we'll put one loop cut here left click to lock in and we'll put one, one loop cut, cut here left click to lock in we'll put another one here and another one here and basically uh, there it goes that was the second left click with this new geometry now when we go back to scope mode now we have even more detailed uh, shapes that we can make because of the new geometry. So if I go to the grab brush now, when I you know pull out the leg before, I can only pull out there now because of the new geometry. I can pull out here, I'll grab here, maybe zoom in, rearrange this some. I hold shift in a middle mouse button and pan. Okay, now sometimes from adding new geometry, you'll have edges like this to look kind of hard. What you can do with that is click here, go to the smooth brush, and very quickly, I'll hold the middle mouse button to rotate. You can see that the smooth brush uh, very quickly uh, takes those hard lines away. Now when I roll the mouse wheel to zoom back, now what's really cool is, you know, we have our base mesh right here. Uh, what we can do is click here, go to object mode now we can go to right here it looks kind of like a triangle we'll click here and uh, we can go down here where uh, we see the shape key so if you click this plus button here okay now you have your basis and your basis is kind of like your base mesh here you can always come back to this uh, basis right here so as long as you have that you can push your character to extremes and uh, not be concerned about not being able to get back to where you started from. Okay so that we can push the characteristics of our character what we want to do is click this plus button right here and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a way that you can push the characteristics of your character without having your character uh, be pushed too far. Uh, however, even pushing it because of this basis uh, shape key, we can always get back. So what we're going to do uh, with this shape key here selected is we're going to click here, then we're going to go to edit mode. Okay, what we're going to do is press A to deselect, then we're going to press uh, A to select the entire character. Okay, so what we want to do is deselect the areas that we want to have uh, the ability to have their proportions changed. Okay, so what we're going to do then is press and hold shift then B, then draw a zoom box right here. We're then going to make sure we're on face select. We're then going to press C for paint select. I'm going to uh, hold the middle mouse button or press the middle bu mouse button to deselect this area right here. 
I'm going to right click to get out of paint select. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to turn to the side. I'm then going to press uh, C for paint select again. I'll select here, but I want to deselect right there. Then I'll right click to get out of paint select. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go to our navigational tab. Then we're then going to select front view. I'm going to roll the mouse wheel to zoom back. I'm going to hold shift and the middle mouse button to pan. I'm then going to press Z, then select wireframe. I'm then going to press C for paint select. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button so I deselect this area here. Then I'm going to right click to get out of paint select. Okay, now I'm going to press Z to go back to solid view. I'm then going to hold the middle mouse button to turn to the side. I'm going to press shift then B to draw a zoom box. Okay, so what we're going to do is press C to go into paint select. Then we're going to hold the middle mouse button to deselect the areas that we don't want selected. Then I'm going to let go of the middle mouse button. Then I'm going to hold the middle mouse button again to deselect this area here. I'm then going to right click to get out of paint select. Okay, now I'm going to hold shift as well as hold the middle mouse button to pan up. I'm then going to press C for paint select again. I'm then going to hold the middle mouse button to deselect the area right here. I'm then going to right click to get out of paint select. Okay, what I'm going to do now is roll the mouse wheel to zoom back. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to turn back towards the front. I'm then going to hold shift and the middle mouse button to pan. Okay, so what we want to do now is uh, make sure that we can get back to this selection easily if we would like to have this selection again if we need it. So to, to do that, what we're going to do is go to this vertex uh, groups option here, select this plus button here. Okay, so now that we have the vertex group, what we have to do is assign this selection to the group. To do that, we're going to go to this assign button and then uh, select assign. Okay, so with our vertex group here, in case we need to get back to this selection, and with the selection actually assigned to that vertex group, what we're going to do is press H to hide all of that geometry that we uh, you know, currently have selected. Okay, the reason why we hid that geometry was that in scope mode, an interesting thing happens when you have hidden geometry. Uh, when we go into scope mode, we'll be able to see that geometry that's currently hidden. However, uh, we won't be able to affect the areas of this mesh that are hidden. Okay, so what we're about to do is go into scope mode. So I'm going to scroll this bar down just a little bit. To be able to work with this mesh inside of scope mode, what we need to do is to select this button right here by left clicking on it. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to click here, go to scope mode, select our tools panel here, then click here, and then select our inflate slash deflate brush. Okay, so we have, since we have the parts of the uh, mesh that we don't want to be affected by proportion changes selected uh, and hidden in edit mode, then now here in scope mode, we'll be able to change the proportions of this character without having the proportions get too uh, distorted as far as like uh, a way that just, in ways that a character wouldn't change as far as, you know, losing or, or, or gaining weight. Uh, what you want to do now is push your character to the extreme a little bit. And the reason why you want to do that is because the shape key that we're currently doing with, you'll be able to change how much uh, of a change your character has by adjusting the value of that shape key. Okay, so now we're just going to click on our character. And like I said, we're pushing it to extremes a little. Going to hold them in a mouse button to turn towards the back. Okay, so what we're going to do now is hold the middle mouse button, rotate back towards the front. Okay, so now what we'll do is we'll click here, we'll go back to edit mode. We'll press and hold Alt, and then while holding Alt, we'll press H, which unhides our geometry that was previously hidden. 
Okay, so what we're going to do is press A to deselect, click here, then select object mode to go back to object mode. This is the button here that we had uh, previously pressed that allowed our, us to uh, manipulate our mesh while we were working with this uh, shape key here. So what we want to do is click here. Okay, now you can see we're back to our basis shape here. However, with this shape key selected here, we can adjust this value slider. So now we can go all the way up to the fullest extreme or we can bring this back down so that we're somewhere in between. Okay guys, that's it for the tutorial. For all of those of you out there who liked videos on this channel and we share them, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And to those of you who are new to this channel, if you like the videos on this channel and you would like to see more, please subscribe and thank you for viewing. Also, there's a button if you look to your upper right hand corner where if you click on that button, you can choose to financially support this channel. And if you would like to support this channel in a financial way, um, it would just make things easier as far as making more tutorials for this channel. As always, guys, thanks for viewing.